Mom married Dad on September 13, 1941. She was Irish and Penobscot Indian. He was Slovakian and had enlisted in the Army nine months earlier. I was born in May 1943. Two weeks later, my mom left me with Grandma because she wasn't quite ready to be a mother. My grandparents had four sons. Pops was a furrier and owned a shop across from the Boston Gardens. Grandma stayed home and was always busy gardening and sewing and knitting. As a young girl, I liked to help Babka bake bread and wash clothes. My grandparents had survived the Great Depression and raised me during World War II while Dad was marching across Europe with General Patton. My grandparents instilled values in me, like how to be grateful for what you have and how to make it through the tough times. I was five when Mom remarried. She picked me up and I never saw my grandparents again. Growing up, I was the oldest and had to take care of my five half-brothers and sisters since mom was always tuned in and dad was always working. I was in high school when I met my first husband on a blind date. When I was 19, we got married. He was in the Air Force and wherever he was stationed, I went. Texas, South Carolina, Alaska. He finished a master's in Fairbanks and started his doctorate at Penn State after he left the service. I tried to take college classes whenever I could. Most of the time, I took care of our two children and worked part-time at the university library. Our marriage was difficult. He was focused on his teaching career while I managed everything else, including helping him to finish grad school. Ed was controlling and became verbally abusive. Eventually, we divorced in 1973. I was not prepared. I only had three semesters of college and I didn't know how to manage money or apply for a job. I had depended upon my husband and trusted he would take care of everything. My first job was waitressing and I found a duplex to rent in downtown South Bend. I tried to get rental assistance, but they said I made $10 too much to qualify. I survived by working three jobs to make ends meet. I never had enough money to buy a car or a refrigerator that worked. I remember the day Ed shoved a dollar bill across the table and told me, here, feed your kids with this. In that moment, I knew I would never let anyone treat me like that again. I would become strong and independent. After a year of waiting tables and pouring drinks, I told myself, you could do better. The next day, I marched into a medical lab and said, I want to work here. What qualifications do you have? Not many, but I'm willing to learn. I became a phlebotomist and finished my bachelor's and a master's degree while working full time. After 15 years, I said to myself, you know, I really don't like this job working with tubes and blood. I want to work with people. So I started a second master's in counseling and took a job working for Koala Treatment Center doing addiction outreach. Later, I transferred to Charter Hospital where I could focus on psychology and addictions. Eventually, I went into private practice. I was 50 years old when I decided I wanted more. In the back of my mind, I always wanted to empower Native people so I volunteered with the Pokagon tribe and began teaching tribal members about substance abuse in order that they may pass the state certification. Afterwards, I was hired full-time and asked to develop the behavioral health department. I worked hard and it was my most favorite job of all. In 1993, I met Chris, a Pokagon band member, and we were married for 18 years. I was happy, healthy, and living the way I always wanted surrounded by Native traditions and a loving and large extended family. Mom had always pushed our Native identity aside. Now I was in the center of the circle with my husband, son, and grandkids. Unfortunately, Chris was diagnosed with cancer and two months later, on October 8, 2012, he walked on. We had so many hopes and dreams. One morning while I was writing in my journal, I asked myself, are you going to sit here feeling sorry for yourself? Or are you going to do something meaningful? I called the Amish builder to start the home we had always dreamed about. Two and a half years later, it was finished. I started to embrace life again. I teach yoga, do tai chi, and make beadwork. I took a Russian literature class, joined a book club, and started to travel abroad. I also volunteer at the grooming shop and bought an RV to travel to powwows with my grandkids. The other day was Chris's birthday. And when I was out waiting, I was talking to him like I always do. And I said to him, look around and be proud of what I've done with our dream house. And thank you so much for always being with me. 
Like our native people tell us, life is lived in a circle. Everything starts at the eastern door and moves through stages until you find yourself at the northern door. Nothing ever ends. No matter what, life keeps going forward. When you are on the bottom, always know that you will rise back up to the top. Life is a circle. Think about it, plan for it, dream and live it. Today I celebrate everything and everybody.